cluttered the airwaves are. So let's go back. Congresswoman Claudia Tenney, you uh, back with us on the Talk of the Town. you there? Yes, thank you. I apologize for that. There is an area near my house that is a uh, dead zone. I live almost in Frankfurt, mm-hmm. so it's, it's a little bit – There's it's, it's, it's a – it's a topic of controversy among our residents. People, would, we, we're trying to figure out a way to make our coverage better there, so I apologize. Yeah. We're going to contact right. our uh, congressperson to see if we can <laughs> yeah. uh, get some relief with that. <laughs> but, no, it is an interesting topic, and actually we've discussed it. But uh, w- what we really wanted to get you on about uh, yesterday, we did have you on the show, as always, uh, on a Wednesday, and we started to talk about a few issues concerning Rome. <clears throat> and uh, when we got done, I did mention that uh, Assemblyman Anthony Brindisi was going to be in Rome at DFAS to make an announcement. Now, we weren't sure what the announcement was about, but it was in response um, to a, uh, a bill, a uh, House bill, that calls for a 25% budget cut um, to, to DFAS, but there was also an amendment, and Rocco pulled the amendment so we could clarify, and I know that's, I think, the, the, what you wanted to point out here, that there is an amendment um, to this, uh, this piece of legislation that clearly um, states a few different things. And Rocco, if you don't mind, uh, if you want to read the four points that are clearly laid out there. I'll just read the letter of the amendment that uh, you sent us. It said, Nothing in this section shall be construed to encourage or require the termination of any personnel or positions within the Defense Finance and Accounting Services, DFAS. So, the four that, lines, is, I'm sorry. Not the yeah, four lines. lines. Yeah. So, it's pretty much, Claudia, is that pretty much the amendment? <laughs> oh, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> lost her Darn it. Oh, there she is. Hold on. Claudia? Hi, sorry about that. That's all right. All right. So <clears throat> Rocco just read the, the amendment to the rules, um, and I don't know if you heard me um, start to talk a little bit about <clears throat> the idea of this bill um, that was put out there, 25%, a budget cut um, for DFAS, and it was more, it seemed like for operational expenses, and Rocco just pointed out the amendment and the four lines to the amendment that says that it encourages or requires it shall not uh, be construed to encourage or require the termination of any personnel or positions within um, DFAS. So, and I think Rocco just open-ended question: Is that the amendment? Was that the amendment? Yeah. Let me first clarify one thing: What Anthony Brindisi is trying to do here is completely duplicitous and deceitful. There is no provision that says we need to cut the DFAS workforce by 25%. It just doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. What there is is the National Defense Authorization Act is a large omnibus bill that had initially, I think, 1,500 amendments to it. Mm -hmm. It comes out every year at the NDAA. It deals with anything Department of Defense related or anywhere, and and it deals with appropriations, and it also deals with uh, organizations like DFAS and many, many others. Uh, what the bill states, because this is really important uh, in the background of what, what this bill is about, we have instituted unprecedented new gains in the Department of Defense. The President, uh, General Mattis, have come to us and said, we need money to rebuild our military, to add more to our forces, to give raises to our military, to help with the VA. All these things are costly, but because of sequestration, Under Obama, which was uh, passed in 2013, we have degraded our military to the point where our readiness is threatened. And so what we're doing is rebuilding the military. We put almost $800 billion more into the military budget this year, and we're going to put another almost $700 billion into the increase in the military budget next year to rebuild our military to make us uh, competitive and ready for the asymmetrical and very difficult challenges we have ahead. Uh, in the Department of Defense, it's very much needed. And in, in advocating for that, Secretary uh, of, of Defense, General Mattis, said, we need this money but in, because a lot of people are against it. A lot of people, like, uh, you know, a lot of the Democrats vote against defense spending because they want more domestic spending and they're opposed to defense spending, which is actually the primary obligation of our federal government. And so what General Mattis said is, I will streamline and use the money that we're spending on the Defense Department efficiently, and for the first time, we're going to make the Department of Defense accountable. We're going to actually have an accounting of where the money goes and, and, and explain that. So that's the general standard. And with the goal, Was it with the goal of cutting 
Well, ultimately, if, if it's it's a, if it's wasteful or not, you know, directly related to readiness. So, in that, in doing that, General Matt, we put the bill came out. This is the National Defense Authorization Act, and an administrator was appointed, which, by the way, Chuck Schumer advocated for an administrator to make sure that we are efficient and we are living up to uh, the tax, you know, the taxpayers and being accountable. Everything that uh, General Mattis. Uh, said that we would do, and so Chuck Schumer supported that. So this administrator is tasked to make sure as we do this, we're efficient, we're going through it all. And what we did is, in reading the language to the bill, uh, we worked very closely with Ed Abinader and others, and, and uh, my colleague Bruce Poliquin from Maine, who also has a DFS in his district, uh, to create, uh, to make sure that we actually protect DFS, because our DFS is very efficient, they don't pay rent, they do a great job, so we put in an amendment that would not allow Congress to cut DFAS or cut the workforce at DFAS and make sure that none of these efficiencies by this administrator or so-called, uh, you know, streamlining would affect the DFAS workforce, which is exactly what we did. We actually protected the DFAS workforce. No, Cla- no Claudia. Ed Abinader. But wait, I want to read this. It's really important yeah. because I think you're going to have Ed Abinader on. Mm-hmm. We have received Who is the DFAS emails. union president? I just want to point out. Right. Yeah. Yes. Ed Abinader, we have received numerous um, emails and worked with him on this amendment. He congratulated for us, and he wrote us. Re- this is the last one letter we got from him. This is Monday, May 21st, just last week, from Ed Abinader. Hannah, my chief of staff, thank you so much. Please let Congresswoman know how much we appreciate her efforts on behalf of DFAS Rome and for saving the 960 jobs at DFAS. What they're doing this week and today is just stunning. And not to mention I've heard I've had emails and letters and texts and messages on Facebook from numerous DFAS employees, including union members, who are absolutely disgusted with what happened yesterday. They thought it was a charade. It was very political. You were not supposed to have a political event at DFAS. And to suddenly go against us and all the work we've done is really duplicitous on the part of Anthony Brindisi. He knows that this is nonsense. And all they're trying to do is cover up the fact that last week we had unprecedented gains in NDAA. We didn't really get to get all of them. You guys are the only media that really covered the fact that Richard Hanna couldn't get the gym taken care of, the Coliseum gym, and getting that, that language changed so we could allow that nationwide so our retirees could use uh, the gym facilities you know that we're being underutilized. We also got in the $14 million perimeter fence, perimeter fence that was demanded by the, the uh, Air Force that Richard Hanna and Mike Curry didn't get. We got it in. We got the language and got that done. They're trying to overshadow our direct accomplishments in NDAA and the things that the good things have been happening by like creating this charade yesterday. It was just, I was shocked. I said, Ed Abinader, you, you're sending me these glowing praise for the work we've done in saving DFAS. And now all of a sudden you're attacking the very amendment you work with us. Did you that. reach out to him or try to express your thoughts or see what, what it yeah. changed? Yeah. And yeah. have you heard yeah. back from them? No, we have not. So the one uh, comment in the uh, today's Observer Dispatch <laughs> that uh, they attributed this to you, they said part of the reason that, and I believe right now the House passed this, but the Senate hasn't acted, correct? Yes, the House has passed All right. And you, so you said in, the, in today's OD, part of the reason the House didn't remove the language completely from the legislation is because it was blocked by the Senate. So what exactly, to me, that's not very clear. What exactly is the language that the House was trying to have? The, I don't the, know. First of all, I don't know. Are they attributing that quote to me because uh, I didn't say that? Oh, it said the, the language is in there for streamlining and efficiency because that's what General, as you were explaining, Mattis's right. promise. Right. So were you trying to take, was that the language you were trying trying to take out, but the Senate didn't want to? No. no? The general language of the bill, this is an enormous bill. It contain, there's all kinds of stuff in there. I mean, look, at you're looking at, I mean, how many amendments were added? A uh, thousand, what, 1,200 or 1,800, something like that. And many of them didn't make it. But this is a big bill that deals with the entire Department of Defense and, and many areas of it. And that one of the things that's generally saying we want to see you know, streamlining and reductions in efficiencies. It is not streamlining and reductions to DFAS. It's generally to the Department of Defense. And so we want to make sure if they're going to go in and start doing streamlining and reductions, let's make sure that we protect DFAS. And by the way, indirectly, 
what Chuck Schumer and Anthony Barbisi, Barbisi are saying is by saying, oh, yeah, you know, her amendment isn't worthless. We need to go protect DFAS because maybe they'll get cut because they're not efficient. Don't they agree and 